Hans Niemann versus this kid. Who is he? As you can see from this table, he's in the list of the world top juniors, just like Hans Niemann. Nordia Beck is number four. Hans Niemann is number five, 18 versus 19 year old. Who is this kid? Uzbekistan number one. In this video, what are you gonna expect? Two games. We're gonna take it from Hans Niemann's perspective. And at the end, I'm gonna reveal the score. It is very surprising. One player totally outclasses the other player, but who outclasses who? Game one. Nordia Beck has white. We have the English, and we actually have the four knights English, e4. Central control. White controls d5, black controls d4. Bishop b4 played. By the way, this is a totally different line, which I'm not going to talk about because things get wild pretty, pretty, pretty fast. This is such a complex line, totally different variation. b4, bishop b4 played. d3, defend your center. d6, kick the bishop, and now we get this situation where white is controlling the dark squares, but if you can't get this bishop in the game, then that sucks. Knight d7. Two ideas, we're gonna put the knight here, but also f5 could be a pawn break in order to get this bishop in the game. Nordia Beck stops it with knight h4. Queen f6. The point is maybe Neiman wants to castle queenside. Bishop g2. And here, Hans Neiman goes nuts. I'm gonna give you a few seconds. Can you guess what move Neiman played here? and he goes absolutely crazy. Now, before I reveal this move, I just wanna show you a cool idea. Let's actually kick this knight away. Why? You're getting space. You also control another dark square. Bishop and knight hit the pawn, you defend. Lots of pawns on the square of this bishop that you don't have. It's a normal middle game strategy. It's a good plan to restrict the bishop. And then the bishop comes out you're ready to castle. This knight is brilliant. It's You can't really attack it easily. There's no b-pawn. You begin your attack as well. However, Neiman goes nuts. He went bishop g4. It looks like just chucks a bishop. Hit the queen. Nodibek takes it. What's the idea? Check. You can't go here. That is game over. No. King d2. Knight f2. You hit the queen and the rook, but... This transition actually works out really well for Neiman. For white, I mean, queen f5, offer a queen trade. The queens come off, you take the rook. I think black is one move away from being all right, but there's an absolutely brilliant move here. It's not even to take it. It's not to take the knight, you go check first. But hang on, you might be asking, both knights are under attack. If you take, take, black is now winning. Rook for bishop, but no. White has seen further, king f8. You save your knight, knight h5. Now, when I first analyzed this game, I thought, hang on, can't the black knight escape? You can see from the blue arrow. No, Nordir Beck has seen further. He's outclassed Neiman in this aspect of the game. King e2, you just attack the knight. If you try to escape, you can't. You can't retreat here due to the bishop. You can't go f6 because of the knight. So he's outclassed him. This is not good. This is looking like a total disaster for Neiman. Knight h5. So he doesn't even save the knight. He goes here. Going for a fork on the king and the rook. So you stop it. Rook b1. There's no point coming here as we saw already. Totally trapping it. So after rook b1... Neiman can't save the knight, so he might as well get a pawn for it. Take. Take. And the point of knight a5 wasn't just to come in here. Check. Look at the pawns. Black has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. White has 1, 2, 3, 4. So black has three extra pawns. They're all split. Look at all white's pawns. They're all isolated. They're all single. If you can't get these bishops in the game, white is in trouble. King d3. So you hit the knight, but also this pawn is being attacked. Block. Bishop in the game. Turns out, 
this position is open enough for the bishops to completely slice the board. h6. The point of this move is actually stop the bishop coming out, but you also stop it going to h6. So two reasons. But these two rooks absolutely suck. There are no open files for the rooks. Bishop e3. Two bishops. They might slice the board. Rook b8. c4. It's so dangerous. The position is about to open up. A total calamity for Neiman. So you block it. Look at the central control. One, two, three, four. This pawn is backward. It's a target. Always. Switch. Face the king. This bishop is always on this pawn. And the funny thing is Neiman gives it up. Check. And the king goes to the center. Why did he give it up? Because he can't move. If you just move the king in the center, knight comes in. Bishop here. Okay, now what? Bishop h5. So a really nice way to sneak the bishop into the position. Rook attacks f7. Okay, well we go back. We just keep waiting. Now what? Now what? The bishop, the other one, comes round, attack the knight. Okay, now what? Well you can see from the blue arrows, the white knight is an octopus. Take. Check. That's why. Get rid of the knight. Your knight is brilliant. The rook comes round. All of these pawns suck. They can't move. They're, they're all going to fall. Back to the game. Rook f1. Rook g8. Check. And now knight g7. Really class move, I think. You're just blocking this attack. I know it's not being attacked, really, but you block it. Now you go g4. Nothing to fear here. You can even go g5, defend it. You can go check. You defend and attack. Nothing to fear. What's the point of g4? Blocking in this bishop? No g5 open it up if you take game over black has no squares every square is cut off by the rook bishop knight bishop you block check everything falls everything is taken so back to the game you didn't block neiman is opening up play against the king but for who you're actually opening up the play for the king it comes in if you take the knight comes in no What's better than opening up the position? Well, sometimes it's actually to get past pawn. It's a future queen. Rook a6. Check from the sides. Hit the pawn. Doesn't matter. Check. Doesn't matter. You hide behind the pawn. This pawn is actually going nowhere. Cool journey from the king. It was on e2. Now it's on a2. Knight c5. Hit the pawn. Doesn't matter. Check. Hit both. Run it home. Push, take, time to reroute. Bishop, back in the game. Bishop e2. Now we are going to jump to game number two. I'm going to come back to this game and then finish it off after game two. This time, Neiman has white against Nordir Beck. We have the accelerated dragon. Bishop comes out later. Knight takes. And now we get the bind, pretty similar as we saw from the first game. A lot of central control from white. Attack the knight. Defend the knight. Attack the knight. Defend by attacking the queen. It's got a lot of pressure already. Black is attacking the knight three ways. No. Knight b3. You hit the queen. This you can't take at the moment. And then you block. Okay, now what? Knight might come here to attack the bishop. Defend. d6. Central control for white. Central control from black. Castle, castle. F3. Lots of central control. Really an arrow facing the d5 square. Bishop e6, attack the pawn. That's being defended. Okay. Rook c1, knight d7. Classic way to reroute, which we saw in the first game. This bishop is now in the game as well. Black has to be very active in these kind of positions because black has less space. Black might get squashed if they do if they play the wrong kind of moves. Queen d2, a5. I always hate this kind of move because you're leaving a square available for a knight to just jump in. The knight can hop in here, but then you get kicked away. This is actually all right for black. Here, something like this, you get the queen out. It's a cool idea. This didn't happen. Just want to show you, f4 happened, but this is a really weird option where you reroute the knight now, we saw this option just a few moments ago. You, you just block it. 
What a total mess. I'm just trying to explain this. Let me have a think. The knight controls b5. You stop any any pawn coming forward. A lot of central control. One, two as well. And after this, if you look on the left, it's like this blue circle is just sorting out all the black pieces. White has a lot of space. So this was one way to continue. Now back to the game. After a5, f4 played. Now f4 normally looks like a great move. f5, by the way, traps this bishop. But a4. Now, if you move the knight to the center, which is exactly what happened, things actually come off in black's favor. White has lots of central control. A good strategy is for black to take things off. Take, 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 take. And now time for another trade. The queens come off. Lots of space for white. Take, take. It doesn't actually matter anymore. Black has a lot of space. White has a lot of space, I mean, because pieces have come off. Now what? Well, that pawn is under attack. You could go b3, but then you actually allow the rook in. No. White goes for a more active approach. Neiman puts the knight in the center. This knight is so dangerous. How would you recapture this knight? I'll give you guys five seconds. Would you take with the knight or the bishop? Taking with the knight is a complete disaster. I don't think it's too harsh to give a double question mark because now you take with the pawn. Okay, bishop here, in. Double attack. Rooks on the seventh rank, it's too dangerous. You are gonna drop that pawn. If you go here, which looks tragic, you drop that one. If you defend this, you lose that. So if we go back a few moves, you gotta capture in the right manner, take. This is an absolute dream position, and once again, it's a total disaster for Hans Neiman. Now, if it's White's move, it's a total disaster for Black. But Black gets the file. You can see from the blue arrows once again, I'm just emphasizing in this Sicilian, we tend to control the dark squares. White controls the light squares. Okay, well, it's an endgame. Now what? Cool moment here for Black to break open the structure. Pawns defend each other. Break it. Break the connection. If you take, that's always a target. You might have to play a tragic move like bishop here. Well, then you're always stuck defending this. No. Neiman keeps attention with king. So then you might take with the king. King g7, g4. Capturing matters in the right direction. This is awful. It's a blunder. Now this bishop is better than his knight. No. You take in the center. This pawn is weak forever. Time to reroute. Knight d7. Black is about to take full control. Nordirbeck is about to show us a great example, a masterclass in the endgame. Check. King goes back. I mean, white is actually one move away from a decent game. Got to improve your worst piece. Rook f8. Now, if you go here, which is what I was thinking, because the next move is actually to come into f5, you might come this way. Then one, two. So the bishop actually stopped the other rook. Cool moment here. Rook f8. Rook c4. Maybe b4 as well. Coming up. Rook f5. Hit the pawn. Defend. Break it open. You don't want to do this. This would be awful. All your pawns are split. No way. Keep the tension. And he does that. Attack the rook. It drops back. h3. Take, take. So the file is open for black. Black's rooks are much better than white's rooks. Rook d2. Just waiting around, but you allow the rook in. The rook was going to come in anyway. And now, rook b1. Total domination coming up. Look at that. Maybe I'm just in love with drawing lots of arrows on Lee Chess. Let's compare all the pieces. The green arrows show the rooks. Black's rooks are just more aggressive than white's rooks. They're coming in. These two rooks, you can see, they're, they're defending this pawn. This is an octopus knight controlling so many squares. The yellow squares show, this is what I call it, it's an empty bishop. You're controlling squares that don't matter. And then you can see the pawns are going to roll. King d2, hit the pawn, defend. King comes round, maybe? No, really cool moment here. I thought it was just king f8 to defend, but this pawn is pointless. If you go here, en passant, oops, rook f4, class move from Nordirbeck. Take with check. It's so dangerous, by the way, 
to give a pawn a check because it's like you've just wasted time and they took something no this pawn doesn't matter maybe this is something Neiman missed you can't actually put the rook there you might be thinking why am I showing this rook moves elsewhere check defense from the rook king has to move back all squares covered there's only one square hit the rook you got to take this pawn and now this rook is out of squares check you go here it's still the same thing check by the way just want to mention it's not this you go here and you attack the other rook so wherever this rook moves wherever it moves check and then you come in just want to show this moment rook c3 check if the king moves thrown a check because it's defended by the knight the king moves now we go rook a2 just move the rook out of the way i think this is a class moment where now you just got a runner right and there's one other key moment king c1 you're getting checked what if the king goes back hit the rook i was just thinking move the rook to the side black is totally winning class moment beautiful beautiful tactic coming up take take also, I think why it's going to run it down. Oh, rook f1 is his mate on the back. That's pretty cool. Take, take. Get a queen. What if you stop it with rook a3? Pause the video now to have a go or just let the timer run. Black to move and win. Class finish here. Queen. Here, check, game over. Now here is an even better finish. I can't believe this move. It's even better than this. You might be thinking, what's William talking about? What's better than just winning the rook? Rook a4. Winning the rook, but getting a queen. There's no good way to stop the queen. Take just in time. Every square. Every square is covered. Class moment. B3. Take, take. Rook moves. Neiman's rook is out of squares. Can't go anywhere. Gives it up for the knight. Take, take. Some play from Neiman. Not enough. King goes to c3 first. Check. Giving up the pawn. That's class. Why? Check. Can't go up. Beautiful move here. Check. And then you can push, you can take. Should be game over. Just want to show you this absolute class. I can't believe this is even a move. I was just going to take and then collect or even push. What is this? Absolutely brilliant move. I can't believe that's even a move. Here, take. There's no way to stop it. Rook can't get back. This bishop is just... Ooh, just guarding that pawn. That is crazy. What a move. I just had to check that with the engine. Beautiful. Beautiful option. King a2. Rook f1. Game over. It's mate. Or you pick up the rook. Can't go here. Mate. Check, I mean. Pick it up. Lots of checks from Neiman. These are called spike checks because they don't lead anywhere. Check. 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 The king is now in the attack. That's the funny thing. You've driven Nordir Beck's king into the game, covering these squares. B3. Now's your chance. Pause the video. Three seconds. Can you find mate? into check with the rook can't go back king a3 and is mate on the side so have your thoughts ready which was your favorite game game one or two now we're going to go back to this moment bishop g2 was played d5 knight goes back to e3 put pressure here check defend you got so many pawns but the knight just comes in and it's game over. If you don't take the knight, if black doesn't capture, then knight f6 is next. They come off. Rook is gone. Check, doesn't matter. It looks impressive, but so what? They can't move. The rook is gone. Take, take. This bishop is just going to pick it all up. King e7. Rook b1. Defend. Check. Bishop c4, game over. Brilliant moment here. Rook a3. So many pawns. You could just take, but you go check. And it's game over, right? 
Wrong. It's game over, right? Wrong. Now it is. Can you see a really cool move for white? Now's your chance. Pause the video. Five seconds. Can you see a really cool move? Now you could just move the rook away, but there's a cool finish. Bishop d5 check. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Only move you've got to take the bishop, but then you're not attacking the rook anymore. Game over. And all these pawns, all these pawns are going to fall. You take that one, throw in a check, come back. Can't move every pawn move is a weakness. Hit the pawn, hit the pawn with the bishop, check, that one drops. Come round from here, check, pick it up. Everything falls. So, let's check it out. Let me know in the comments section. Which was your favorite? Game one or game two? And then at the end, I'm gonna reveal the score between them. There's a gigantic score for one of them. So a quick summary, we have the English, four knights, and this is the first critical moment where Neiman decides to go absolutely crazy. He didn't play this cool plan where you're gonna castle. He actually went berserk with this. And then we get this situation where it's queen. It's a rook for two knights. Brilliant move here, the knight is trapped. You come back, the bishops totally slice the board. Bishop comes in, block it off, you get your pass pawn. The king comes in, get a pass pawn. You can check me, doesn't matter. Nordir Beck runs away. The bishop now comes in. Beautiful moment here. One other point I just want to talk to you. That's another option. You can see on the left, just totally dominating the rook. They can't move. This rook can come in the game. Nordir Beck went for this, and then we get this beautiful situation where two bishops against the rook and then it was game over and then it was absolutely beautiful move here just to finish it off was this your favorite game or let me know in the comments was it this one we get the sicilian now white gets a bind in the center a lot of pressure in the center key moment coming up where we get this want to trap the bishop but lots of things come off in black's favor gigantic decision here take with the bishop and now we get knight against bishop, total domination. I love this situation. This is a grandmaster's dream where I think a top player would say you are playing for free. The knight totally dominates the position. We come in, break open the structure, the rooks come in and here I'm just in love with the arrows on Lee Chess. Absolute domination with the octopus knight. We come in, the guy doesn't even defend. I love this moment, check. Hit the knight, no squares mate, no squares. He gave it up, but not enough. Check, check, and then we are, we're good mate, we're good. Check, 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 doesn't matter. Check, king comes in, mate into, cool finish, clean. Which was your favorite, game one or game two? And now, as promised, the final portion of this video. Here's the table, they've played eight times. Counting the draws, one and a half each. But look at it. Nordir Beck, one, two, three, four, five. It's an overwhelming score for the Uzbekistan prodigy. He's up 5 0 against Neiman. So, total score, they played eight games. It's actually six and a half, one and a half to Nordir Beck. Hans Neiman versus Hikaru Nakamura. Really? Does chess speak for itself? Bottom right, we have YouTube's selection.